Hi guys and welcome to today's video for determining the rule for a function from its graph. Yes, these titles could not be any longer. Trust me. Well, they could, but please don't make them any longer. If you are new, hi, welcome. I am Darren, Maths Guru, and these videos are dealing with everything you need to know about transformations, translations, dilations, and reflections. You couldn't ask for any more. This particular one is probably one of the best of the series because, well, I'm actually just saying that they're all pretty good, but actually this video is the one that sort of tricks people. We got so used to drawing these things, we got so used to going from one equation to another, that maths can throw in a curveball. And I blame Barry as usual, hashtag no more Barry, um, because he tries to trick you. And I'm going to show you a couple of those tricks, three in fact. Should be a relatively short video, stick with me. Uh, if you haven't already done so and you're new, I am a small person trying to do a pretty good job, or a pretty big job, because uh, it's just me uh, sitting in a room talking to myself, doing Australian curriculum, English curriculum, Australian, it's, it's massive, it's, and British and American, and oh, it's all very big. So if you can help me and subscribe by clicking that red arrow over there, or what the red arrow is pointing to, I would be deeply, deeply grateful. It helps me know that people are watching. Otherwise, let's carry on. As I say here, we are recapping. It's building on a load of videos that have been dealing with dilations, reflections, and translations. And we've looked at being able to graph these things, sketch them, move them around using algebra, shortcuts, to be able to get used to the idea that we can look at any function now and relate it back to its base function. But actually, as it turns out, every single graph has some sort of function. For example, you may have met in year 10, y is equal to a, x plus uh, b squared plus c. Now they'll change the letters. There might be a h and a k, the plus might be a minus. But generally speaking, we have an idea here that that is one of the general forms of a quadratic equation. Another form might be y is equal to a, x plus b, x plus c. For example, that's another form uh, of a quadratic equation. Is there another? I should go, I'm sure there is. But the point of it is, if we give you the general form and some information, you should be able to go back and get the actual equation of the curve. And the best way to explain this, believe it or not, is through examples. Now these have been taken from the Cambridge Mathematical Methods Units 3 and 4 textbook. If you have no idea what that means and you're in India or you're in America or in the United Kingdom, don't worry about it. It's fine. Great textbook series with lots of examples. But what they're basically saying is you've been given some information and the biggest thing you need to know is the general form of that equation. So this is what I'm going to write down first. y is equal to a on x plus b. They're effectively saying, can you find the values of a and b and write out the equation in that form? Now before I even look at this equation, I know that because I've got the x on the bottom, what is its base graph? It is a hyperbola. Now that might not be useful to this question at all, but it might. Let's see what happens. And they've given me two equations, oh, sorry, two uh, coordinates. Why have they given me two coordinates? Well, let's see what happens when I put that first coordinate in. So when I have the value of one comma five, it means that x is one and y is five. So let's substitute five is equal to a on one plus b. Well, whenever I divide anything by one, I get just that letter. And so there we go, I have an equation. Can I solve it? No. Why? Because it currently has two unknowns. Now if I have two unknowns, I need two equations to solve it, which is why they've given me my second and, uh, point there. So I now know I've got a point 4 comma 2, and so x is 4 and y is 2. So substituting straight back into my original equation, 2 is equal to a on 4 plus b. Well, we don't like fractions, so what am I going to do? Multiply absolutely everything by 4 which gives me eight is equal to eight, uh, sorry, a plus four b. There is my second equation. Useful? Of course it's useful because I'm now going to do simultaneous equations. So a plus b is five and a plus four b is equal to eight. I'm gonna subtract the equations together to eliminate my a's. So four b minus b gives me three b, eight minus five gives me three and so b is equal to one, yay! And how do I find my value of a and b? We'll probably go back to equation number one. If b is one, then hopefully a is equal to four. Now the question stated, find the values of a and b. So therefore, a is equal to four 
b is equal to 1, formally state my answer somewhere so that the examiner can see it, but I would also check, check that equation 2 also works with those values. Uh, 4 plus 4b's is equal to 8, and so tick. Simple, really. I'm literally substituting it in and using a bit of simultaneous equations. What about this example? Any different? Probably not. We've been given a curve with this equation here. Now again, what is the base graph? What does that look like? Well, it's always helpful to know that that is in fact a square root graph. A square root graph that has been uh, dilated, it's been moved, it's been moved. So the values of a and b are a dilation and a translation vertically. How do we find this? Exactly the same as we did a moment ago. So I know that x and y are given by 2 comma 1, so that's one of my coordinates. So when y is 1, I get a times the square root of x. Sorry, we know what x is. I keep doing that. My apologies. 2 minus 1 plus b. Well, we know that 2 minus 1 is 1, so 1 is equal to 1a plus b. And once again, I have my first equation. I've got two unknowns. So they have to give me some information to help me find. Oh, look, they've given me a second coordinate. Life is so good. Awesome. So we've got 10 comma 6. And I know that that's x and that is y. So let's substitute it again. 6 is equal to a. The square root, let's not make the same mistake we made the last time, is 10 minus 1 plus b. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, these values are all very contrived and work beautifully. Will you get that? Who knows? Hopefully, if you are really, really lucky. But we never know. So we know that uh, 6 now is equal to a times the square root of 9, which is 3 plus b. There is my second equation. And once again, we have a plus b is equal to 1. And we have 3a plus b is equal to 6. We're going to subtract them to eliminate the b's. So I get 2a is equal to 6 minus 1, which is 5. So a is equal to, oh, look at that, 5 on 2. And you're going to turn around and say, well, that's not very fair. Can they do that? Of course they can do that. That's exactly perfectly legitimate. It's, it's fine, in fact. So we know that a is 5 on 2. We need to find the value of b. How do we do that? Well, we know that a plus b is equal to 1. So we know that 5 on 2 plus b is equal to 1. And so take those away is actually going to give me minus 3 on 2. So a is equal to 5 on 2 and b is equal to minus 3 on 2. We think, but it is always good to check. We've used equation 1, so let's use equation 2 just to check. 3 a's is 5, 10, 15 on 2 plus a b, which is minus 3 on 2. So take away 3 on 2. 15 minus 3 gives me 12 on 2. And 12 divided by 2, when I went to school, and I've never really left, is in fact 6. Why do you think they use fractions in mathematics? Yes, because people hate fractions. And again, it's just there to try and trick you. If you don't like fractions, well, to be perfectly honest with you, I am so, so sorry. But you're going to have to grow a spine, build a bridge, and actually learn how to use them. And the best way to do that is practice, practice and practice. Now, asymptotes are those pesky things uh, that actually can cause some headaches. But in this situation here, they are very, very helpful to me. So I have a situation here where I have an asymptote at x equals 2, and I have an asymptote at y is equal to minus 3. Now, I know looking at that graph, it is the graph of 1 on x. And we know that for the graph of 1 on x, we have an asymptote here and an asymptote here normally. But what's happened to those asymptotes? Well, it must have been moved two places that way and three places down. Now, that's brilliant. It's already given me more information by knowing the base graph than I could possibly imagine. Now, we know the general form of that function. We know that the general form, and it's probably going to be given in a question, is given by f of x is equal to a on x plus b plus c. Now, what are the values of b and c? Well, we now know them because we know that this has moved two places that way and it's moved three places down. So before I go any further, I know that y or f of x is equal to a on x. Now it's moved two places to the right, so that's going to be minus 2 and c is going to be equal to minus 3. Yeah, because it's moved 3 down. So 
how many unknowns do I have? I've got an X, a Y, and an A. Well, A is the value I'm trying to find, so I need to have an X and a Y value. Oh, look, how surprising. I have happened to draw that graph again and put a coordinate value on. And I could use that and substitute it into here, which I'm not going to do, and you would then find the value of A. All of this stuff is remarkably, remarkably simple. The point of it is, as I say here, and I'm gonna put a big, very poorly drawn box around it, is always use the knowledge of what the base graph looks like and look for those asymptotes. Very, very helpful. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is a short video, way less than 12 minutes. Well done. Why is this important to me? Well, because all of this could be examined and all of this could be in a sack. Thank you so much for watching. It is really good to have you here. If you haven't already done so, in a moment there is an opportunity to subscribe. But it's awesome if you could tell your friends these videos are here. I'm also doing the Further Maths course. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. So over there is a circle that has just appeared to allow you to click and subscribe. And just below it, ladies and gentlemen, is in fact another video that you can watch relating to this series. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. I look forward to seeing you again. This is Maths Guru, signing off.